Prince Melissa, what you are about to watch in the next video is a video that is exclusive to Silhouette You. However, it is this month's free video of the month, so we are releasing it to everyone. We have more than 500 videos in the Silhouette You library that I don't have here on Silhouette You. So here's your chance this month to check this one out. Hey guys, it's Melissa. In this video, I am going to show you how to use Silhouette Studio as a software layout tool uh, when you are doing sublimation. So this would apply to whether you, you are using a Sawgrass, SG500, SG1000, a converted Epson printer, which I don't typically recommend using, but I know a lot of people do, or a uh, purpose-built Epson sublimation printer, an F170 or an F570. So Silhouette Studio, along with being a design software, is really, really good for laying out. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first things first, when you open up Silhouette Studio, you will be in the design area. And if you click this right uh, top button up here, the page setup panel is going to open. Now, in a case like this, we are not using a machine. So you don't have to do this, but I typically like to do it so that it removes the cutting mat. So I'm just gonna pick none from the option of what machine we're doing. And then, it's, and then that will automatically change the cutting mat to none. Now, what you can see here is that the media size is 24 by 24. So that just is automatically, um, being set up that way, but we are gonna change it to match the printer that we have. So if you click on media size, what you're gonna see is you have the option here for printer. Now, the printer option, this is eight and a half by 11. This is determined by the printer that you have currently selected. So right now, I'm not using, I don't have one of my sublimation printers selected, so it's, it's pulling whatever printer I have, which is just an inkjet. So before you do anything else, you are going to go up to File, Print Page Setup. It looks a little bit different um, right now because uh, with Mac, the new Mac OS, it kind of changed the print page setup, but, but don't worry. And it also looks a little bit different on a PC, but you should still have some of these, you know, most of these same options. So the, the same, the thing that you're gonna do here is you're gonna select the type of printer. So don't allow the computer or the operating system or the software to guess what printer you're using. You want to select it. So in this case, let's just say I am going to use um, the Epson F570. Okay, so I'll just pick that one. All right, now what that's going to do, it doesn't look like anything changed right now and it didn't, but right the next thing that I have to do is change the paper size. So in this case, let's say I'm going to use the 24 inch roll and you can, use any length roll you want, but let's just say I'm gonna use 24, I need a 24 inch wide and I need something up to like 17 inches, so 24 by 30 is fine. Now, when I click OK, and now I have still have it set to media size, what you can see over here is that the printer no longer says eight and a half by 11, it says 24 by 30, and you can confirm that by looking at the measurement or looking at the ruler up here. So it's now 24 inches by 30, okay? All right, before we actually lay anything out, let's pick a different printer so I can just show you that. So for example, let's go to File, Print Page Setup, and in this case, I am going to pick a Sawgrass. Now, this is picking the printer, but when you, if you are printing from a Mac to your Sawgrass, you're not actually gonna print this way, you're gonna go through the print manager. I have a separate video on that, but this will at least set up the page size for you so you can see what we have. So um, format here, or excuse me, the printer is the Sawgrass SG1000. So paper size, again, you don't want to let it automatically pick for you. So the Sawgrass, you can print 11 inches wide, you can print eight and a half, you can print 14. So pick what size paper or what size um, material or um, yeah, what size paper you are using. So in this case, let's just say, even though my Sawgrass SG-1000 is wide enough for me to use um, 11 inch wide paper, let's just say in this case, I'm going to use a standard eight and a half by 14. This works well, actually, let's say I'm sublimating socks or something, okay? So I'm just showing you that no matter what printer you put, pick here and what page size you print here, 
I want you to watch over here while I click OK. Okay, so it's changed. Now my layout page is eight and a half by 14, okay? Now, the next thing you wanna do is check this box here for show print border. Everything that you are going to print needs to be inside that border. And the position of this border is gonna change depending on what printer and what page size for that printer you have set up, okay? All right, now, next thing, you can now import your designs. So let's say I am going to do a sublimation tum uh, tumbler. I'm gonna do file, merge. Merge will bring the image into the current work area that you're working in, all right? So I've got, I just downloaded a bunch over here, so let's just look at these really quick. All right, so let's say I'm gonna do this skinny tumbler, okay? I'm gonna bring this into Silhouette Studio. Now, be aware, if your design is large it might and has a lot of fills, it might take a while for it to come in. Okay, so what you have here is what you can see is that this is nine and a half wide by 10. So this is actually not even going to be able to print if this is how big I actually need it. This is not even going to be able to print on my eight and a half wide paper. So in a situation like this, I'm actually gonna say, you know what, I can't use this printer to print a template for a tumbler that's nine and a half inches. If your tumbler is actually smaller, then you can resize this and that's fine. Um, but instead of doing that, let's change the page size. So again, print, print page. Now, we know that the Sawgrass SG-1000 can print up to 11 inches wide. So let's find a piece of material that is 11 inches wide. All right, so you've got, it's A3. If you have A3 size, if you don't have that, then you obviously can't use it. All right, tabloid, same thing, 11 by 17. So whatever you have, you can select. Now, if you have a different size, you can click manage custom sizes and add your own. So let's say I wanna say, I wanna do, um, I'm gonna call this, Uh, sawgrass 11 by 14 paper okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say it's 11 by 14 okay does it have margins do you need to check what the margins are I'm gonna actually put it in here so it selects them okay it knows the paper oh no we're not doing that we're doing 14 okay and then I'll click OK and I'll click OK again now just bring that same um, design back in. Okay, so now it will fit. And not only will it fit, oh, it looks like I have snap to grid on. Let's go change that. Did you see how I'm trying to move my mouse, but it's not moving smoothly? See that? That is this snap to grid. And I literally, I did not change this, so I have no idea why sometimes it does that, but see how now it's smooth. So you got a lesson in a lesson. Um, okay, so now next thing I can do is if I wanna put something else on the rest of this page, I can go back and I can do merge and I can add another object in. So maybe I want something small um, like this that I'm going to you know, just put on a, a mug or something you know, a smaller design, all right? So I can bring this down here and just resize so that it fits, okay? Um, now, if you select your design and see how this bottom part down here is outside of the printable area, use the little green circle to rotate it. And sometimes what that allows you to do, depending on how you rotate, will give you the ability to fit a design that normally wouldn't. So I'm gonna try to move this. Now look, see how it's now all fitting? It doesn't matter if it's a little bit turned because you're gonna print this out and you're gonna cut it and when you apply it, you'll apply it straight, okay? All right, now let's open up another work area. And I'm just gonna show you how to use, let's say you have an SG or a F570, the 24 inch um, Epson printer. Print page setup. I'm gonna change this to my Epson F570. And I'm gonna change this as back to that roll, 
okay? And the reason I'm doing this is because this is really where people end up trying to lay out stuff. So I'm gonna do merge and I'm gonna pull in a couple of different designs. Now with the PNGs, especially for sublimation, they tend to be very large um, and heavy files. So see this one, for example, this actually has all these red lines here. Those are cut lines. So I'm gonna go into send and I'm gonna turn off, I'm gonna say no cut. And that is going to dramatically reduce the amount of data in this image, okay? And that way I, I'm not, um, I don't get that same kind of drag. So the other thing is I don't want red lines. I wanna change this so that the lines are black. So I'm just gonna change that to black, okay? And now it's, it's instantly black. All right, in a case like this, this is for a smaller type tumbler, but let's say I need to make like four or five of them, okay? I'm gonna select the design. I can go to my tool over here that is replicate. That will open up, let me pull that up here. And you have a couple of options. You can tell it, you know, duplicate to the side, you can tell it um, that you wanna fill the page with this image. So if you click fill page, it's gonna put as many as possible on this page that will fully fit. It's taking a minute. Again, you can see it's processing. This is a huge file, so it didn't, so you can see what it did, it duplicated it there. But my point is that this is how you can use Silhouette Studio to lay out your designs. Now. I'm not gonna go through every single printer, but I will give you two examples. If you're going to print to the an Epson uh, uh, F170 or F570, and I'm calling those two out because they are purpose-built sublimation printers, you will go to print, you will pick your printer, okay? You wanna make sure that you print. Now, what you need to see is down here is th this is where all of your um, uh, color profiles and everything are, okay? And I have a separate video on all this, but I'm just letting you know that this is where all your stuff is, okay? Underneath all of these, in these settings down here, okay? So you'll have to click into them and that's where you will find what you are probably used to and what you might see in some of my other videos. Let me just change this so that you can see what the F170 looks like. This one doesn't have nearly as many options, but you do have, um, you do have some things that you'll need to go in. And I would never, never, never recommend you just pick it and click print because you're not using the, the correct uh, color profiles or anything like that. So just be aware. So see here, let's say you're not doing rigid. Let's say you're using um, a textile, different things like that. You wanna be able to go into the settings. So never, never, never just go to file print and click print. Okay, now I said I wasn't gonna go to all of them. I do want to call out Sawgrass on a Mac specifically. If you're on a PC, this part is irrelevant to you because you would just pick your Sawgrass and uh, you would pick the Sawgrass print manager, which would be listed under printers, and you would print that way. On a Mac, you don't have that option. On a Mac, I'm going to close this. You're going to go to File, Print, and instead of picking the printer, you're going to go down here to where it says PDF, and do you see here where it says Sawgrass Print Manager? So now it's sending this image, this layout, to the Sawgrass Print Manager, which is going to open up. So that is how we would then utilize uh, the Print Manager from Silhouette Studio on a Mac, okay? All right, I have a lot more videos on how to print um, to your actual printer, how to do the whole project, how to make sure you're getting the best colors. This video specifically was on using Silhouette Studio for layout. Um, and making sure that your page is set up correctly, the size is set up correctly, and just a quick couple other tools for how you can replicate, how you can pull in other images and layout um, to take advantage of the full print size that you have regardless of what printer you are using. If you're interested in checking out more videos from Silhouette U and unlocking all the benefits, including one-on-one -on -one chat help with me, whether you're looking for help with your Silhouette, uh, heat press, sublimation, Roland, laser, DTF, DTG, whatever it may be, it's all over on Silhouette U. You can check it out for seven days for free before actually committing. Uh, of course, we would love to have you. You are, will also be able to take advantage of those live chat helps. You'll be able to um, join our Facebook page, the private 
members only Facebook group as well as use the priority inbox that I uh, check and answer multiple times a day much faster than I can get to the regular Silhouette School inbox. Uh, we have a whole bunch of deals uh, that are for members only including uh, $14.99 a month for fonts and designs of your choice over at SoFonzi, 10% off uh, DTF transfers. We've got discounts at Swing Design, uh, online labels, Sparkleberry, all kinds of different deals that we have with re retailers and a whole lot more. So be sure to check it out at SilhouetteU.com and we'll see you over there.